Good evening, everyone. It is six o'clock and I will call this meeting of our Committee of the Whole to order. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And with that, I will look for a motion to approve this evening's agenda, moved by Councillor Ernst, seconded by Councillor Sanford. Any additions or deletions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. That takes us on to the approval of the meeting minutes from June 7th. Can I get a motion to approve those as well, please? Moved by Councillor Bertel, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Any errors or omissions to note? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. That takes us on to new business. Our one item of business tonight is the review of the draft capital budget for the town general fund and water utility. I will turn it over to staff to make a presentation. And I believe we'll just, if councillors have questions throughout the presentation, just make notes and we'll leave them to the end so that staff can get through it. So I will turn it over to staff. Thank you, Mayor and members of council. Uh, for the public record, my name is Jamie Doyle, Chief Administrative Officer. Uh, this evening, uh, we're happy to bring forward the proposed 2023-24 uh, 20, 20, capital budget. What you'll see this evening is something different. You'll see a more consistent approach to our budget presentations and deliberation. I'm quite proud of the work staff have done, especially during uh, some of these times of significant change. It's tough enough uh, to do it during a regular season. However, as you're all aware, there's been some significant change throughout this organization. So thank you for that uh, to staff. Uh, they pulled the, pulled this together quite quickly uh, and quicker in the past, as I, as I understand. And in my opinion, uh, it's certainly with more concise purpose and more thought through of uh, what we're doing. Our goal is to put uh, the town in, in better position uh, for the upcoming construction season. And I think with this proposal, we've done exactly that. So thank you to all of them. And the management team is certainly here uh, to do their presentation. Um, but before I turn it over to Lisa Dagley, the finance director, I'd like to reiterate the, uh, the mayor's comments about the questions. Uh, it'll flow nicely if we get through it all and then ask questions after the fact. Thank you, Mayor. And with that, I'll turn it over to Lisa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Doyle. So uh, again, for the record, I'm Lisa Dagley. I'm the finance director uh, for the town, uh, for those who aren't in chambers. I will be providing an overview of the draft 23-24 capital budget, along with the funding and uh, reserve summary. First slide, please. Staff have compiled the draft capital budget before council this evening to support the goals of the comprehensive community plan while continuing to balance fiscal responsibility. The 23-24 capital budget totals $2,340,000 with more than half of that amount to support public infrastructure. Next slide. The funding for the 23-24 capital budget is a combination of deed transfer taxes, Canada Community Building Fund, surplus asset reinvestment, reserves and debt. Next slide, please. As noted on previous occasions, the province has an upper limit for debt financing for municipalities of 15% of tax revenue. The town continues to plan for the future upgrade at the wastewater treatment plant and the proposed $3 million of debt financing. Use of the debt affordability model from the Municipal Finance Corporation allows staff to balance the current municipal debt financing requirements while planning future capital years as well. Next slide, please. The town's capital reserves are established either by an MGA requirement or by policy bylaw direction of council and can only be spent for capital purposes. The ICE resurfacer reserve was established in 2019 and is collected as a $4 surcharge on arena rentals. Funds are beginning to build after the purchase of the current machine in fiscal 21-22. The Public Works Equipment Fund was established a number of years ago through a $20,000 annual transfer from the operating fund. This amount has not been adjusted for over 15 years and is not keeping pace with current costs or replacement schedules. As part of the operating budget, staff hope to bring forward a proposed revision for this reserve. A more formal approach to saving for future, capital, for future fire equipment has been established. There is an annual transfer to this fund 
via a dividend from the town's water utility. The goal is to maintain the cost for fire debt financing and reserve savings within three and a half cents of the tax rate for this specific purpose. The Canadian Community Building Fund, which was formerly known as the Gas Tax Fund, is an annual allotment received by municipalities via federal provincial agreement. Lunaberg's typical annual allocation is $225,000. Any amount not expended in a particular year can be carried forward for future years. The other equipment reserve is typically from the sales of surplus lands or buildings. The Municipal Re Government Act requires that these funds be for future capital purposes only. The province sets the parameters around deed transfer taxes for municipalities, but the town controls its own bylaw. We currently collect 1.5% on the sale of properties with 1% dedicated to capital projects and a half percent for operating revenue. Next slide, please. Like the capital reserves, the town's operating reserves are established by an MGA requirement or by policy bylaw or direction from council. Council does have a bit more flexibility within the operating reserves to change direction of a reserve should you wish or need to do so. The election reserve was established to smooth the budget for this expense that occurs only once every four years. The salt reserve provides a backup budget um, in particularly challenging winters. Bunker gear for our 50 member Depart fire department is expensive and requires replacement at specific intervals. After the last full replacement, a reserve was established, which is shared 50-50 with the district to fund this cost at the next replacement interval. The annual sewer rate includes an allowance for a minimum reserve transfer. Typically, these funds support small capital items for the plant or lift stations. In the 22-23, budget, the financing cost for the future plant upgrade was incorporated into the sewer rate. And this reserve will accumulate to either reduce overall borrowing when the plant upgrade is completed or help fund potential inflationary cost overruns. Once the upgrade is completed and financing is secured, this amount will be used to cover the annual principal and interest payments. Recreation reserves are from the film location fees and the Lunenburg Athletic Facilities Fund or LAF is a specific purpose fund which was established by council. Pro Kids is a specific program established by council. Funds are typically received by donations. There is however, an annual transfer from the operating fund. The general operating reserve is funded by transfers from the operating fund as approved by council. Typically these funds are used to support smaller capital items each year. The operating surplus reserve is a requirement by the province that annual operating surpluses be transferred to this reserve. Council does have discretion on how these funds are spent. However, staff recommend that these funds be maintained as extraordinary emergency funds. This is reviewed annually, however, at, as part of our year-end preparations. I will now turn over the presentation to my colleagues to take counsel through a review of each specific capital item included in the 23-24 draft capital budget. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, for the record, my name is Tyson Joyce. I'm the town engineer. I'll be starting with the capital budgets for the town general and public works department. Starting with building improvements at town hall, we have the refacing of the exposed concrete face of the wall at the north end of town hall on Towns Townsend Street. Uh, the budget for that item is $100,000. At the Victoria Road building, also known as the Blue Building, we have the overhead door replacement, and that's switching out the barn doors and replacing with a, an overhead roller door. 
We have a budget of $10,000 to improve the safety and security of that asset. Moving on to town programs, we have the beautification and the tree planting program, and that's the supply and installation of new trees. Uh, we have a budget of $40,000 for that. With the equality, diversity and inclusion program, we have a project that's to be decided, but we have a budget of $30,000 for that. Moving on to public works, uh, sidewalk renewals. We have the Green Street sidewalk renewal. The scope of this is to remove and replace the existing sidewalk, starting at Victoria Road and working up the hill to Hill Street. Uh, this would improve the condition of the sidewalk and widen it from the existing four feet out to five feet. Uh, in terms of lineal meters, looking at 660 metres of sidewalk. Uh, the budget for this work is $325,000, and that's based on a, a Class A estimate provided by consultants. Moving on to new sidewalks, we have the Tannery Road sidewalk. So that has two components, a construction and a land acquisition portion. Uh, it would add 280 metres of sidewalk to our existing network. Uh, the total budget for, for that is $386,000 and the construction portion of that is based on a, a Class A estimate provided by consultants. In terms of new sidewalks, we also have uh, Linden Avenue. Uh, we have an item for the design of a, a new sidewalk on Linden and a budget of $35,000 for that work. For street reconstructions and, and resurfacing around the town, uh, we also have Linden Avenue in this. So this would be the design work for street reconstruction. We have a budget of $40,000 for that design work. Uh, we also have the Dufferin, Lincoln, Falkland three-way intersection. Uh, the design for the intersection improvements uh, to take on board the recommendations from the traffic study. And we have a budget of $40,000 for that design work. Continuing with street reconstruction and reservicing, we have Victoria Street. So the plan would be to perform resurfacing, uh, which would be to remove the top inch and a half of asphalt and replace it. It's planned that this would, would run from Green Street and it would run past the community centre access along Victoria. Uh, we'll get to it later in the presentation, but uh, it will be planned to run in conjunc conjunction with a water system upgrade in this same stretch. Uh, the resurfacing would impact approximately 200 metres along Victoria Street, and the budget for this work would be $230,000, excluding the water utility component. Moving on to street improvements. So we have our flashing beacon lights at crosswalks. So that would be adding sets of the the flashing beacon lights to existing crosswalks to improve pedestrian safety. We have a budget of $50,000 for that project. And then we have downtown traffic improvements. So that would be operational improvements to safety, things like line painting improvements, bump out curbs, better defined parking. So we have a, a budget of $50,000 for that work. In terms of the equipment for public works, we have the plow for the new trucks. So we have the new dump truck arriving in spring of 2023. It would be a plow to attach to that, a budget of $20,000. And then we have miscellaneous tools for the crew, things like concrete cutting tools, additional drills, budget of $15,000 for those items. 
I'll now move on to the wastewater treatment component of the budget. So starting with the plant, uh, we have the UV system upgrades. So that, that would improve the wastewater treatment process at the plant. Uh, a benefit of this is that it would be able to be retained in the plant when we are able to upgrade. And the budget for this work is $264,000. We have the Fournier Consulting, which would allow the consultant to come to the plant, uh, assess our practices, and provide recommendations for improvements. Uh, uh, we have a, a budget of $30,000 for that item. Continuing the plant, we have various, uh, various testing items and system improvements. Uh, so it'd be upgrade, up, excuse me, upgrades and replacements to items for the plant. Uh, we have a budget of $35,000 for those. And then we also have a drilled well for the biofilter. And this would allow us to drill a, a well in the vicinity of the biofilter and use groundwater to operate the biofilter rather than supplying it with, with town water. So a budget of $20,000 there. So moving on to the storm system, uh, we have the Tannery Road culvert assessment, and this would be an engineering assessment of the existing storm culvert between the harbour and Victoria Road. That's a, a major asset in storm events. Uh, we have a budget of $105,000 for that assessment and would expect that there would be repairs or upgrades generated that would follow uh, in subsequent years. Onto the, the sanitary system. So we have the flow meter at the Fisherman's Wharf lift station, which would allow us to accurately measure potential overflows at that location. We have a budget of $20,000 for that project. And then the suction line upgrades at the Blue Nose and Star Street lift stations, a budget of $50,000 for that work. Thank you, Tyson. Uh, good evening. For the record, my name is Arthur McDonald. I'm the Director of Community Development, and I'll be presenting the Community Development Capital Budget for 2023-24. I'd like to start off with the next slide of our uh, Civic Square design project. Um, we intend to issue an RFP for public engagement and design work for the Civic Square area, and that is between Townsend Street and Cumberland Street. This will include uniform surfaces, railings, stairs, and ramps to meet accessibility requirements, as well as the restoration of the bandstand. Resulting construction project is anticipated to take place early in 2024-25. And the proposed budget for that item is $80,000. The next item is the arena accessibility entranceway. Um, we're proposing to have a new design build of an accessible arena entrance in line with the accessible audit that we did this year. And the proposed budget is $30,000 for that work. The next item is the arena compressor overhaul. And this is an overhaul of the arena compressor to ensure consistent operations. And the proposed budget for that is $20,000. And the next item is the skate park. This will be a design build of the skate park facility upgrades, which will include new concrete surface complete with new skateboard elements an accessible walkway, and a new gazebo. Uh, project is to be funded through grants and private donations, and the proposed budget amount is $165,000 for that item. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, 
for the record, uh, Tyson Joyce, town engineer again. Uh, I'll be moving on to the water utility component. So starting with the plant and the water production, uh, we have the membrane replacement. So this would be to replace and expand the critical component of the water system. Uh, the first phase of the project will be happening in, in this current fiscal year. So this would be the second portion of that. Uh, the budget for that work is $200,000. Uh, we have the cleaning system installation at the water intake. So this would be the su supply and install of the cleaning system at the water intake out in Dares Lake. Uh, we have a budget of $35,000 for that. We have the lighting for the process and chemical room at the plant itself. So that would be upgrading from the sodium fluorescent lighting that's prevalent in the plant now and changing those to LED fixtures. We have a budget of $9,500 for that. Uh, we have the combination analyzer for the garden lot sandpipe, budget of $9,000, and the chlorine analyzer for the plant, which has a budget of $6,500. Building improvements for the water utility. So we have the repair to the spillway out at Dares Lake. So this is a, a project that was deferred from the 22-23 fiscal year, uh, a budget of $200,000 for that. And then we have the raw water pump house waterproof of the foundations uh, where there's been deterioration over the years, a budget of $25,000 for that. Continuing with the building improvements, uh, we have the solar array project at the water treatment plant. Uh, so it would be the construction of the roof and the ground mounted system at the water treatment plant on Northwest Road based on the feasibility study that we presented earlier in the year to council. A budget of $350,000 is in place for that. Uh, there's a current funding application that uh, Devon and his team are working on to be uh, attempting to offset the costs associated with this work. Moving on to the water system itself, we have the water meter rollout for domestic users. So this would be as the town commences its transition from flat rate to metered uh, charges for domestic customers. So this would include the planning, uh, purchasing of the materials required and commencing the rollout itself. The budget, $300,000. For any new services in the town, we have a budget of $20,000. And then for replacement hydrants within our system that are uh, aged or, or not working correctly, we have a budget of $20,000. Moving on to water system upgrades, we have the Harborview Morash Loop. So this would be the construction of a new section of the system between Morash and Harborview. Uh, we have a budget of $120,000 based on similar projects performed in the past. And then on Victoria Road, as, as we talked about earlier in the road resurfacing section, uh, we have the renewal of the water main in this, this section of town. So this would be the design and construction of the existing piece between Green Street and the vicinity of the Blue Building or the Bowling Alley. Uh, we have a budget of $300,000 for that work. Thank you, Tyson, Art, and Lisa. And Mr. Mayor, now you can have the, the conch again, if I could use that word. And uh, feel free to ask any questions. We'll try to address them as best we can. Thank you, CAO, and thank you, staff. I'm quite pleased with this. And I, I think it's a really healthy capital plan for this year. And 
particularly in the context of the overall revised five-year plan. I'm quite pleased with uh, what I feel is the progress you've made. Um, so I'll open the floor if councillors have any questions. And with to utter shock, Councillor Halverson is first. Thank you, Worship, and uh, thank you, staff. That was a very comprehensive report. Uh, I have lots of questions, but I'm not going to ask them all because I've got other councillors here. I do want to touch on a, a couple. Uh, the Victoria Road resurfacing, uh, one of the pictures we we looked at there, as we're aware, uh, we we're talking about between the bowling alley and, and Green Street. Uh, is it in the budget? Well, when you're doing the resurfacing of the road, will there be uh, any consideration given? Yeah, if we're looking at here uh to to curbs or, or something because i'm just looking at wait basically with a straight highway right here just roll off into dirt i don't know it just it seems like an opportunity to do an upgrade there i don't know if that's in the plan or is it necessary through the chair uh the plan in terms of the resurfacing would be to remove the existing top surface of asphalt and and reinstate it as is uh, if if we wanted to get into curbs and and those kinds of infrastructure that that would enhance that section, we would need considerably more budget to perform that work. So we were trying to to work within the constraints of of upgrading the water system and then uh, coupling it up with an opportunity to improve the the road surface, which uh, which does need a, some attention. Um, I also have, I'll limit myself to two more questions if, if uh, you guys will indulge me. Um, I've had this question before, so I, I would just appreciate uh, just having this on the record uh, about the tree beautification, the tree planting. Uh, if we could answer uh, how many trees we're getting for $40,000 and uh, why the cost is what it is to, to have that many trees for that much money. I don't know who wants to take that one. Uh, through the chair to Council House, and I'll, I'll take the first shot at it. And Tyson, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this is, uh, uh, if I could say, a placeholder for $40,000 for trees. Um, I don't believe it's known how many trees we'll get for $40,000. I would like to assume a lot, but given the last the last year, it's probably 40. Um, I can't say for sure if we'll spend that much or if if that if the capacity are to install that many, but it's more of a uh, a budget to allow us to spend up to $40,000 on trees. Uh, maybe just, uh, again, just for clarification purposes and for the record, uh, we did plant some trees this year and it was there was some expense. It, it seemed quite high, um, but I think it's it was explained to me and it seemed quite understandable when it was explained. Um, are you privy to, to explain why each, I believe we Printed, was it 20 trees or something for the amount and uh, thank you and to counselor again yeah, i believe it was 24 trees and that cost does include the tree and the labor to to install them i'd have to confirm with tyson that's the case but i believe it was in the original response so that cost was all inclusive okay yeah it was the allowance this year we we've installed 24 trees there's one more coming in the spring and it also includes uh, stump removal, the the labor and equipment. Yes, yeah, when we're looking at you know hundreds of dollars per tree, you know, to the layperson who doesn't look at this and, and understand that it's not just you know we're not just going up and digging up a tree and putting it in a hole. There's there's a lot of maintenance and and care and and renewal that goes along with that. So I just want to get that on the record. Uh, and my final question. Thank you for indulging me. Um, uh, oh, uh, I saw in the water utility, you were mentioning the 300, where is it? Yes, water meter rollouts. Uh, I see that we have $300,000 allocated for rollout and $20,000 allocated and $20,000 allocated for services and hydrants uh, over the next three years. Uh, uh, are those placeholder numbers or is that, uh, you know, a, when a, I'll just take water meter rollout. Is that $900,000 spread over three years or are those placeholder numbers? Can you explain why those numbers are as they are? In terms of the water meter rollout, 
those those are estimates based on on what we expect those items to cost but it it is it is a little bit of a moving target with the materials supply chain um and and those kinds of items so so is this this rollout isn't going to happen one fiscal year. We're not going to get to every residence in one fiscal year. This is something that's a planned rollout over two or three years. So that's why there's budget for those in that amount for those at that time. Is that correct? It's correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. Open the floor to any other questions from councillors or comments. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Worship. Well, I'll center mine around my usual topic of debt. <laughs> <laughs> So I see like the budget shows about approximately 500,000. It's around, I think 450 or whatever, uh, we accumulate debt for these projects. So, um, and there was only one project that was noted, uh, you know, the possibility of funding. So I guess I'd like to, two questions. First is how much debt are we retiring this year? We won uh, versus the debt we're gonna uh, incur. And then secondly, you know, what are some of the possibilities for funding to also uh, eliminate some of that, some of that debt? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, so as terms of retirement, there are actually no loans that are actually retiring in the upcoming fiscal year. The projects that are secured with debt, um, some of those are ones that are perhaps a little bit more challenging to find a grant to offset them um, because they tend to fall in that core infrastructure category, which is a, a difficult category to find um, funding. We are, um, you know, we've already put in a grant for the Green Street sidewalk and um, as, as discussed about the solar array, and we continue to explore all of those. But at this point, we don't have any for those particular items that are included in the, the debt category. And then just further on, like we did have a reserve from our sale of assets. So, you know, are some of these um, capital projects worthy of going into that reserve? So um, when you're looking at the funding section of the, the capital budget, there is one that says surplus asset reinvestment. So there are some projects that are included in that um, a particular note is the Green Street sidewalk that that the whole thing is being financed from sale of surplus assets. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Councilor Duggan. Um, so I see this item is not actually coming up until the 2027 uh, year. So it's a little ways down, but I did wanna bring it up while it's in front of us. So the Kissing Bridge Cemetery Hill resurfacing project, um, that that one's been on my mind for a while and i think probably because i take it numerous times a day uh people use that as one of the main pathways to get down to the back harbor trail so there are people walking up and down the sides of that road at any given time of the day um the sides are you know very poorly maintained um a lot of crumbling asphalt along there um, just wondering if there's any consideration being given to some sort of separation on either side of the road for some sort of ease of access to get down to the trail, uh, whatever that looks like, a bike lane, a walking lane, um, something to keep people a little bit safer while, while taking that to uh, the trail system. Uh, I, I don't know what's included in the 400000 dollars if that's just the resurfacing of it but in considering that project later on i would like to look at an option for that um just because it is such a busy area uh, through the chair uh the budget that's that's detailed there is for the road resurfacing itself but uh, we can we can look into those options uh, before uh, we get to that that project. So understand what you're saying about safety uh, safety aspects there. Um, we do have the ditches on on either either side of the road, which 
which makes it a, a little more complicated in terms of the the storm system works the way it works there. Uh, so we would have to integrate some storm system improvements there as well as as part of it to generate a sidewalk. So yeah, we can uh, we can look into that between now and then. Okay. Oh, oh Councillor Sanford. Thank you. Through the chair, um, this is just a, a something for consideration as we go forward. As we're looking at using the surplus asset reinvest, I'm wondering if it might not be in our best interest to look at or consider something. So as an example, in 27, 28, we're looking at the new public works uh, construction of the public works building. So I'm thinking, might we want to consider focusing our surplus asset reinvest on a specific rebuild so that the community understands when assets are being surplus assets are being sold. They know what the goal is. It's pretty clear and you can see it and it's easy to translate. Whereas if we fritter it away, not that this isn't a good use of our, our resources, but if we just spend little bits here and there at the end of it, you know, people are going to say what we have to show for it. Well, we have some pavement here and some pavement there, right? That's just for consideration. Um, my question is um, through the chair for uh, Tyson. Can you help me understand, please, the flow meter at Fisherman's Wharf? What is the purpose of the flow meter? Uh, through the chair. So the flow meter uses to measure um, if there's too much water coming to that particular station, more than the pumps in the station can handle or there's a power outage that affects that station and it can't pump the water that's coming to it or the sewer, I should say, not the water. Uh, then it's designed rather than back the system up, uh, it's designed to discharge to the harbour. Um, as part of environmental regulations, it's up to the town to be able to quantify the overflow and report that to NSE uh, It's part of our responsibility. So at the moment, at that particular station, uh, we can perform calculations that are more empirical than actual, but it's the best way that we can estimate that overflow quantity. Having the flow meter there would allow us to better quantify the amount of overflow that occurs in those kinds of events. Can I ask another question? So where are we at this point in time in the monitoring the content of what it is we're actually discharging into the harbor? I know there were, we talked maybe two years ago at the beginning when we first started about, you know, uh, performing some, some work that would eliminate um, some of the substance that was being discharged into the harbor. So where are we on that point, please? Oh, just let me take a step back as well. I'm talking about untreated material that would come to that Fisherman's Wharf station that then gets pumped to the wastewater treatment plant. So yeah. my apologies. I, I didn't really Thank uh, you. explain that correctly. That's good. Thank you. Okay. okay. Anything further? I'll take my three then. Um, I'm wondering, uh, particularly in light of what a bunch of other people have talked about in terms of surplus asset reinvestment, and I know that that's basically the main way we're going to be able to move some of these other projects forward into a more aggressive timeline, particularly with things like new buildings and street resurfacing and that kind of stuff. So I'm just looking to the CAO, I suppose, for a general update on where staff are at on that. Um, and bringing that forward uh, just to improve the progress because we've gotten the annex sold in two years. So I'd like to see the next two years probably be a little more productive. Thank you, Mayor. And I think as I quibbed last time we had this conversation, it may have been two years, but four months since I've had it. So I'll just stick that feather in my hat. Um, what you'll see in this to kind of go back. <laughs> um, I'll go back to, to Councillor Sanford's question or statement a little bit earlier as well. The five-year plan that you see in front of you 
it also serves as a de facto reserve priority list. So as we receive some of those funds coming back in from the sale of assets, we rank those on a priority basis and certainly with input from council as years go on and what we move forward or you know what we don't move forward. As we move forward, I believe it's the, the 13th meeting, we'll have the new policy for the land divestiture. So we do it, we do it holistically rather than these one-offs. Uh, we pick some of the ones that are still one-offs because we're so far along in the process, so it would probably be more hindersome to, to wait. So the annexes or 17 Tanny Road is a good example of that. So hopefully uh, coming into the first quarter of the new year, we'll have a better idea and program to start to divest ourselves of our of our assets. That would also include a uh, communications campaign and plan, as Councilor Halverson's mentioned, about how we communicate why we're getting, why we're selling some of these assets, the cost of the taxpayer, mm -hmm. what it costs from staff time just to service some of these buildings. So a bit more of a holistic approach that we'll hopefully have in better stead uh, come the first quarter of 2023. Thank you. No problem. My second question also won't surprise anyone on staff in terms of being one of my annual hobby horses throughout this process. And it's just, I understand that, you know, um, when we're thinking about existing buildings and things that money does have to be spent on them at certain points in their life cycle, but I'm always keen to make sure that we're thinking ahead, you know, um, so we're not driving in sunk costs that then, you know, prevent us from moving forward with plans or increase the cost of our moving forward plans. I'm thinking of things like the money that's been budgeted over the five-year plan for the blue building and all that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm just wondering, and I'll, I'll punt this to the CAO again, just to say, uh, what kind of planning are staff looking at um, from the perspective of making sure we're only spending um, the bare minimum on these assets that, you know, we really are just hanging on to until we can address them? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, and certainly when I finish, should, uh, the town engineer wish to, wish to chime in. He certainly can. The blue building is a very good example, something that we've batted back and forth uh, between staff as we went through some of the preparation and dry runs for this budget proposal. And what we've come down to the conclusion is we spend what we need to on our assets for, from a, a workplace safety requirement, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, it sounds a bit... Uh, it's simple, but basically we're just trying to make sure we're still providing a safe work environment for folks. Anything above and beyond that, if it if it's not contributing to something that we that we're not keeping them, we really see it as, as a moot spend. So we wouldn't go down that road. Okay. Thank you. And my last one is with respect to um some of the things that aren't in the in the capital side. And I'm just looking to make sure that a few of them are in the operating side when the operating or maybe in the operating side, when the operating budget comes forward, I'm thinking things like some of the planning RFPs with respect to the recreation campus master plan. Um, are we proceeding with the, the sidewalk renewal program in the operating budget the way we did this year, which I felt, I don't know how others feel, but I felt that was a very successful initiative on public works part, um, road patching, parking meters, that kind of thing. So where are those, are those kinds of things coming on the operating side when the operating budget comes forward? Thank you, Mayor, and certainly uh, punt to my colleagues when, when needed. Those type of items are certainly operational in, in nature, and they would be coming forward in, in the operational plan, given, of course, fiscal constraint of what we can actually afford. Uh, the planning work, of course, is quite near and dear to my heart, uh, as well as uh, everybody sitting here, as well as the operational items for sidewalks and curbs and things. I think the gang did a great job uh, this past year as well with sidewalks and road work. Uh, so I applaud them as well. So uh, stay tuned. And I, I believe as soon as we can, we'll bring those forward in the new year. Appreciate it. All right. Seeing no further questions or comments, I assume staff have a draft motion prepared, if that could be brought up on the screen for Committee of the Whole to recommend the 2023-24, would it be? Capital budget? Yes. Uh, for council's consideration. Let's give everyone a moment to read that. Anybody's pleasure to move that as circulated? Moved by Councillor Halverson, seconded by Councillor Sanford. Any discussion or debate? Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Worship. Well, I think I just want to uh, uh, 
reach out. I just want to let the staff know. Like, first of all, it's nice to see you all here tonight. Um, I think um, truly it's, it shows you, you're working together as a team. That's nice to see from our perspective. I think uh, not that your work was ever not thoughtful in the past, but I think it was thoughtful on the, the basis of our, our CCP and uh and 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 um uh, before watching lisa and kathleen really kind of bear the burden of this entire budget you know it was uh, you know it, it's really nice to see each of you here to explain your departments and and uh, and, and again they just come together as a team right from the cao down so uh I, I that's the first time i've experienced this since i've been in council and it's nice to see so Thank you for your work. And I think we could, on behalf of all of Council, echo the Deputy Mayor's comments there. Any further actual discussion or debate? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? And I will note that I am also in favor. Opposed? None. The motion carries unanimously. So, that being our only piece of business, um, we probably won't need to have the December 6th meeting, but we will leave it to staff to determine whether a meeting is necessary. I think that was supposed to be a holdover for this, so you can cancel it in due course. Uh, 